Okay, so I think Dave already mentioned that I'm Paul Kruger. I'm in the mechanical engineering department. And uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about tablet PCs, which is uh, sort of the forerunner to, but well, a little bit different than iPads and Android tablets and so forth. And so this is actually an older model. This is an HP uh, PC. And what, it's, what it has, it has a digitizer, pen digitizer built into the screen so that when I put the pen up to the screen, you can see the little dot there. And when I touch the screen, then I can write, and it uh, records that, and of course I can save it uh, later on, and so forth. Um, actually, then I can erase that. Uh, let me go ahead and put this on full screen, so that you can kind of see what we're dealing with. But what I do with this, and uh, um, you'll see a little bit more about tablet PCs today. I guess I'm kind of the intro to this, so I'm going to be brief, and you'll see some of the other ways that you can use this. But I use this a lot in lecture, and so uh, I'm using this hardware, so this is an HP computer, but other Windows computers do this. Um, and uh, the newer computer, the newer Windows computers, a lot of them have both the pen digitizer and the touch interface built in, so you can do both uh, if you want. The advantage of doing something like this, uh, with, with it, it ends up being a little bit more expensive to have the digitizer built in typically, is that you have much finer control over what you write. So I can write these, you know, very small little letters uh, with fancy symbols and so forth, and it all works out just fine, which is great for me because I'm an engineer and we like to use funny symbols to talk about what we talk about in lecture. Um, but so the hardware piece is there. The other piece that I'm using is a software. This software is called PDF Annotator. There's others out there. In fact, um, Microsoft PowerPoint actually is compatible with the digitizers, and so you can and you can annotate the slide directly in PowerPoint if you like. Uh, but what I do with this in terms of lecture is rather than just have a bunch of PowerPoint slides, I have slides with pieces in there, but most of it's removed so that I can go through, I can draw sketches and schematics like I have on this slide. I can write and annotate as necessary so that I can and lecture and go along, but where necessary I can have um, filled in other pieces of information. So let me scroll down here a little bit. Um, so that the students don't have to write down everything. So for example, here, this is sort of the conclusion, and I just write it up and say, here's the conclusion of all this. You don't have to write it all down. I'll put it in. It's there. It's accurate. You don't have to worry about your notes being a little bit off because you didn't copy something down right. But it still gives them a chance, as I'm lecturing, to go through and follow what I'm doing do the schematics, be a little bit more interactive. Um, the other thing that uh, it allows me to do is, of course, when I need to, I can throw in pictures and talk about what's going on with the actual application of some of the ideas in a real world setting. Of course, I can annotate these as well and say, you know, here we have this, and yes, it looks right, just like that, and so forth. Um, you can add different colors and so on depending on the software that you're using. That's all, you know, software uh, dependent and, and depends on how you want to use it. One of the couple of the key advantages that I like about this, first of all, I can save the notes so I know what I'm talking, you know, if I've uh, uh, said something in class regarding a specific topic or an exam coming up or something like that, I can save it. I can post it later if I want to. Um, one of the key advantages for me is that while I'm writing, my head and my hands are not in the way. So the students can always see what I'm doing and write it down. The big disadvantage, however, is there's only one, right? There's only one screen typically in the classroom. So uh, if you're using a chalkboard or a whiteboard, you might have several. You can roll them up and down, back and forth. So as you roll up a whiteboard, right, they can work on that while you're, you know, preparing the next one. So a lot of times I'll have to pause and fill in in the lecture while I'm waiting for students to finish writing what I just wrote before I move on. So there is an adaptation that, that goes on um, along with that. Uh, a lot of what we do in engineering is distance education, especially with our graduate program. So in fact, that's when I got started on this was um, it was a great way for me to do the distance classes. I plug it into my computer, I do the lecture, everything that shows up on the computer is being recorded and goes out to the students. So it was a really uh, advantageous way to interact uh, on a distance education type of platform. The other thing that I do um, also frequently with distance ed is if I get digital versions of homework in, I can annotate those and correct and say, you know, yes or no, I can switch 
you know, my colors here and say, you know, that was right or this is wrong and uh, give the students feedback. So they email me something, I annotate it, tell them what the score is, email it back, and uh, we don't have to go through, you know, postal mail or anything like that. Um, one other point I was going to make. Um, oh, as far as uh, homework, so grading the homework is one thing I can do if I get a digital version of that. The other thing that I can do is when I prepare solutions, I do it in here rather than writing it on a piece of paper, scanning it, and then posting it to Blackboard. I'll do it in something like PDF Annotator, or save it as a PDF, and then post it to Blackboard. So it saves me a little bit of time, keeps it all digital in case I need to go back and uh, edit it which is really easy to do because I've got it written here, but I can just erase it and everything's gone and I can go back and fix it. Um, so this is just kind of one quick example of working with tablets, a little bit different from what Andy was doing, uh, but complementary. I mean, I think there's, there's uh, similar applications for both of these uh, sorts of technologies. I think uh, Dave and Scott are going to talk a little bit more about other things that you can do with tablets, so I'll kind of stop there if there's any questions. What, uh, what kind of file formats can you integrate with this? I mean, can you put, can you insert a video or, uh, or let's say an interactive uh, spreadsheet? Yeah, so the question is what kind of file formats can you use? And basically anything you can do on your laptop, you can do. Um, the only question is whether or not annotating with the stylus is going to be helpful or beneficial with that. So like I said, you can use PowerPoint directly. So anything that you can do in PowerPoint, you can present, and then, you know, as you're going through, you can annotate with the 